Hello, my name is Sibulet and this is a tutorial about reducing potty count. What is a potty count and why reducing it is so important? A potty count is the total amount of polygons in your item. In Blender, it will be the number of trees you have on top of your window. There are several cases where you will need to reduce the amount of polygon of your item, like to create all the LODs required in order to make an item for The Sims 4, to reduce a high poly model you made in order to calculate the difference and bake its normal map, or to convert a mesh and optimize it to become game ready. And just for you know, there's a huge difference of polycount between models that are made for renders and models that are made for video games. For a game like The Sims 4, an object is expected to be approximately 2000 polygons maximum per tile. This amount can vary depending on the item. Like for example, if you're making a plant and you want to mesh individually each leaf, it can be higher, especially if you don't want to use alpha planes. But there is no reason for a vase to be 20,000 polygons. Even if you think it does look better in Blender, I can really assure you that it, can, it won't make any difference. You can probably do the same result in 2000 polygons or even 3000 if you aim a very high result. It's a tiny clutter object and if you have that many details, you can probably bake them in the normal map. As a note, CAS items are usually higher than that because the game is focused on characters. So first, the main reason you will want to reduce the polycount of an item is to create all the different LODs. LOD stands for level of details and is necessary for two reasons. Firstly, according to the graphic settings you're choosing for your game, the objects on screen will be more or less detailed. Secondly, when playing the game and zooming in or out, the game will automatically swap between models to avoid having too many polycount when you're too far away anyway to see the difference. An item has usually two or three LODs, and sometimes it can be one in the case, for example, for a rug or a poster. You can choose not to create all the LODs, of course, but not that it will affect your game performance, and if you aim to submit your items at TSR, for example, it will be rejected. The second reason is when you created a very high poly model to have a lot of details and then you reduce the polygon to make it much smaller to create a normal map where all the detail you meshed will be applied on a texture. This process is all explained step by step in my tutorial about normal map. Last reason is to convert an item from another source. By the way, it's not because you found a free model that it's free to use. Do not share, or worse, do not sell models that you found for free without checking the terms of use and copyrights. If you're creating for your personal use, then it's up to you. The object you create is your choice, but if you intend to share it, you have to warn your downloaders about how much polycount you have used, because most of them won't know the difference and won't know how much the computer can handle. So how to reduce polycount in Blender? I use three different techniques to reduce the polycount of my items. It will depend on how many polygons the original item has, but also how the item is shaped or how much do I actually need to reduce the polycount. My first technique is by removing edge loops. To select an edge loops, I need to hit Alt key and then right click so it will select all around the polygons that are connected together. This technique only works if you mesh your item with quad and not trees. If you have a tree meshed item, it won't work. So if I try to select an edge loop on a tree item meshed, then I can't select all around. It's one of the reasons why meshing a quad is important because when you will have to reduce your polycount, it becomes much more easier. By deleting edge loops, we will remove all unnecessary details or too smooth edges that are not needed when we will zoom out of our item. For example, in this bub light, I will remove one of two edge like this, then press delete and select edge loop. As you can see in object mode, we barely see the difference. You can always check on the top here the number of trees you have removed. We were at 1,100 trees, and after deleting the edge loop, we are at 700. 
To know how much you need to reduce the polycount between LODs, usually you can count half of it. So if your first load is 1,200, then the second load might be something around 600, and maybe the third load might be around 300. Obviously, it will depend on how much polygon you can actually remove. And the goal is to remove as much as possible without destroying the shape of your mesh. Another thing to keep in mind is to never delete an edge loop that has a seam line. If I click on this button here, it will show me the UV map without having it selected. So if I select the edge loop that contains the seam line and delete it, you can see that it will completely mess up my UV map. So when you place your seam line, you have to be mindful about how you will reduce polycount later or it might completely mess up your UV map and make the process much harder. The second technique I use is the lazy method. It uses the decimate modifier in Blender. Go in the modifier tab here with the little wrench and add modifier and select decimate. You can see right now that this object is 7600 polygon, which is way too much for a simple piece of fabric like this. So for example, if I divide it by half by entering 0.5, then I can see that it lowered by half the number of trees. As you noticed, it only took me a few seconds, so that's why I call it the lazy method. But it's not as good as removing edge loops individually, because first, it will sometimes not work with every mesh, and it will also mess up your UV map. So for example, if you have a texture with repetitive patterns, it map breaks this pattern. If I go back to my previous mesh and apply the decimate modifier, you can see that it won't work as well as the method we used before. First, because we can't really choose where to apply the decimate modifier, which will be applied on all the meshes, and as you can see, it created some holes in my mesh. So even if it's the easiest and faster way to do it, it's definitely not the best technique. It will work better with organic shape or models that are meshed with triangles. And finally, the third technique is by using the limited dissolve. I will only use it on some very particular items. For example, when I want to create a written item, I sometimes use the text tool from Blender. I hit Shift A text and then write something in edit mode. Then I can change the font on the text tab and then by hitting Alt C, I can convert this text into a mesh. If I go in edit mode, I can see that it created a lot of unnecessary faces. So if I select everything and hit Delete, Limited Dissolve, it will simplify a lot the shape and you can see that the polygon use have been cut by half. This technique can also work well with objects that are cube-based. For example, those shapes I used a lot of edge loops to create and extrude some shelving inside. If I select everything and hit delete limited dissolve, it will save me some unnecessary polygon into flat planes. It will reduce the polycount by half without changing its shape. But this technique don't always work with any item. For example, for this lantern, if I hit limited dissolve, not only it barely reduced the polycount, I was at 580 before, and now I'm just at 560, which is only 20 polygons to reduce, and it completely messed up my UV map, as you can see. Especially if you intend to share your work, you have to learn how to properly reduce the polycount of your item without destroying all your hard work on your mesh or your texture. This is the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and if you have any question you can ask in the comment section or you can join my Discord server where we have a special channel to answer questions of Bad Sese Miki. If you like this video, please subscribe so I can keep them coming.